how many times has it happened to you that you're tuning away or you're on a dyno session and you just love to be able to get a physical handle on whether it's actually knocking or not. Let's say you're doubting the fuel, you're doubting the sensors or the setup in the ECU. So you just want to throw something on quick and easy. Well, I've got the knock ears for you. Let me show you. Today we are very lucky that there are so many awesome ways to detect knock in our engines and help us complete a tune without damaging anything. Sometimes, however, we just want a quick double check that we can hook up on the fly, on the go, very quickly and just hear it for ourselves and, and decide if what we're seeing or hearing is, is right. So before we get into that, let me just show you some of the units that I, I love today the more higher end stuff. And then afterwards I'll show you, show you my old standby. <laughs> so first and foremost is the TFX engine unit. Um, it is an in-cylinder pressure logger that uses Optran sensors, specially made spark plugs, so that you can actually log cylinder pressure by tiny little crankshaft degree increments. And you can see the pressure trace exactly. If there's any knock, any abnormality anywhere, very easy to see. The problem with these units is they are very expensive. I haven't seen them anywhere really outside of like university kind of research settings. Um, and even the individual sensors are, you know, like I forget, like about $1,500 each. This is like a custom made plug that'll live in pretty severe environments, you know, big 3,000, 4,000 horsepower turbocharged, whatever. I wasn't really going to go into this unit, but just very quickly, here's some sample data from TFX. We got uh, crankshaft degrees on the bottom, pressure on the side. The graph, the kind of lighter purple-pink mark, is what the combustion uh, pressure would be without a combustion event. The darker purple is your combustion temperature in the cylinder. And then the, the blue there is your combustion pressure. And you can see we got about 2200 PSI. It's a little bit late in the cycle, about 22 degrees, so we can make some power advancing it. You can see RPM, power and torque for that cylinder at that spot. Um, you know, some other data, volumetric efficiency and whatnot. What we're concerned with is this detonation potential, the detonation rating. We see it's one, so it's because it's smooth, no chance of detonation there. That's uh, cylinder one. This is the record number. So, yeah, that looks all pretty good. So here's a nitrous motor, uh, sample nitrous data from TFX. You can see all kinds of hell is breaking loose here. Again, there's the uh, no combustion kind of pressure. The yellow is the combustion. Look at the spikes in that. That the, the pressure just all over the place. We got massive pressure at just two degrees after TDC. So the, the rod and piston are straight up and down. The detonation rating there is 12. It's, it's this is going to melt down. And then a couple cycles later. Still knocking real bad, but you can see it overlaid it with six. So by, by looking at six, our tune-up is way out still. But, uh, you know, it gives you same timing for both cylinders, same jetting. So something's going on with that cylinder five, and we'd know we'd have to investigate. But then my next favorite unit is this JNS Safeguard. As far as I'm concerned, John is the best in the business. And for 600 bucks a thing, this thing might cost... It's amazing. Not only does it detect knock, let you listen for knock, it'll tell you which cylinder is knocking, how badly, and it will retard the timing for you. Pretty amazing little unit. The one thing that can be tricky is you need a donut style wideband knock sensor and you have to find a place on the block to bolt it. And as you know, some of these newer motors, blocks, cars are working on, it's so crammed in there and tight, it's very hard to find something. It also needs this one because it detects knock and then will pull timing. It needs that little interceptor harness that I had made up. So these are for LS coils, let's say. It listens for, for knock around the spark event. If it detects it, it'll actually pull the timing right, right away. Pretty amazing unit. But uh, again, finding a place for these things these days is a pain. And this is kind of like a cheaper... One that you just buy online. A lot of people make them, but they still use this donut. Awesome solutions. They all work. But let me just show you my old standby that I've had for over 25 years. 
Are you ready? Promise you won't laugh. An old Garrett engineer, David Inall, who later uh, started a turbo company called Incon Systems and made some pretty awesome Mustang turbo kits back in the 90s, put me onto this. And I've lived by it for 25 years. Forgive the dust. It's rough. It's original. Um, I'll show you a link on online <laughs> afterwards so you can see what they look like when they're new. And what we have here is a set of Steelman chassis ears. That's right. All it basically is, is a little uh, amplifier that you can plug a set of headphones into and a bunch of microphones. And this takes six and you can switch between them if you have a couple of places that you want to listen. So we'll just unplug the headphones there. It's just a little nine volt battery. And of course I've lost the cover over the years. Let's see if the battery's dead. Oh, battery's still good, lights up. It comes with, I can't remember how many of these it came with, eight or 10. These are just small clamp on microphones. And believe it or not, they work incredibly well, right? So you just find a location somewhere convenient on the block, uh, like a motor mount bolt, cylinder head stud, any sort of protrusion where it's not going to vibrate off. You clamp it on, the microphone is epoxied in under here, and then you plug the other, it's like 15, 16 feet long. There's another one. You just plug it in there, and you put your headphones in, and you can listen away. Literally, the setup takes you, I don't know, 30 seconds and it's awesome the only thing with this is you really have to be practiced and know what you're listening to it's not a filter of any type it just straight gives you uh, vibrational noises so you'll hear the valve train and everything but you, you you learn very quickly what to listen for all right so i'm not sure if this is going to work but this is what i've got going on there I've clamped that microphone way over there at the, this end of the bench. Okay, so it's plugged into the unit here. So I'm not sure if that ended up working or what you're going to hear. I did hear it was picking up some interference from some reason. I'm not sure if it's the microphones being near each other or what, but hopefully you can see it's very sensitive. Um, so there's a couple of disadvantages to this method and nothing that really you can't overcome. The first thing is, like I said, you will hear everything. Uh, predominantly, you're going to hear the valve train very loudly. So... I'll give you a little tip on how to do this. So what you want to do is you're making your pull. You keep turning the volume down to keep all the engine noises at kind of a reasonable level or lower level. So it's barely audible, but that you can hear it. And knock's going to come out through that. You will hear it. And it sounds, you know, it's been described as like marbles rattling in a can. But the trick is it's not regular like your valve train is. It'll, it'll come through as, as sort of like an irregular, when it starts anyway, as like an irregular ticking or clicking or something. So it just takes some practice. You could probably Google some audio clips. So, yeah, it's going to take practice, and that's the, the biggest uh, kind of obstacle. The second thing is the headphones that it comes with are terrible. Um, I don't have them anymore even. Uh, they're not terrible, but they're like an open back deal. So they're not very sound isolating. And when you're inside of a dining room or, you know, you've got a loud engine going on, you really can't hear much. So I bought this pair of their uh, extreme isolation. Uh, these headphones are made for musicians and particularly drummers. So they're very well sealed and isolated. So they're a lot, um, 
a lot easier to hear what's going on without a, the ambient noise kind of cancelling everything. And these are another way to do it. These are little uh, in-ear headphones. Um, they're also made for isolation. And they work better than just plain earbuds because you've got the little three steps and it really seals like a set of earplugs. And then uh, for good measure, you could throw a set of uh, like sound counseling uh, headphones or, or you know your ear protectors for the dyno on, over top yet. And they're very sensitive. These are made by a company called, I think it's uh, Edemotic, E-T-Y-M-O-T-I-C, -I -C, something like that. And, and they work really nice if you... If you don't want the big ones like that. Other than that, it is an awesome, awesome way to do it. I mean, you know, if you were ever a member of Auto Speed, the the kind of online magazine, they showed back in the day a few ways to make your own. But honestly, for I think these go for like a hundred dollars with probably eight of these uh, microphones, and the last year, like I said, I bought this mid '90s, and it still works, and I still use it when I have doubt and want a quick double check. So I hope that helped you. I really haven't seen many people use them. And when I've whipped them out and used them with other tuners, I go, oh, what's that? You know, and it's kind of cool. I, my friends back in the day used to make, when we were tuning Hondas back in the 90s, you know, they'd make fun. Oh, we better bring out the Whisper 2000. I don't know if you remember that, but kind of an inside joke. So, so just go into your search engine and put in Steelman Tools Chassis Ears. Search the results, grab the one that says uh, electronic ear, chassis ear electronic squeak and rattle finder. And uh, there it is. It looks pretty well the same. Uh, same headphones. Like I said, you want to get a better pair there. The uh, There's like six, I guess. So And then the, the little uh, control box. It looks a little different, but it's still strangely similar. It hasn't changed in a long time. And I mean, 99 bucks. You, can't go wrong it's it's a pretty good deal well i hope you enjoyed that and we'll see you again thanks a lot